Hello, everybody. Welcome to Echo Underground. I am Shanique. This is Mike. And on this podcast, we talk about movies, music. And whatever the hell we find interesting that day. We're, we're, we're just winging it here, guys. Just, just keep up with us. <laughs> exactly. Um. So, today's podcast is going to be about the new album by Sean Mendez called <laughs> Sean Mendez. Um, before we get into it, you can hit us up on Twitter at Echo U Podcast and let us know what you guys think of any of the stuff we reviewed or if you have any suggestions, we're open for it. Um, so I'm gonna give this album an A. I don't think there's anything wrong with this album. I thought his singing was really good. I um I liked that he had mix of styles between some of the songs. I thought he had really good lyrics, he had really good vocals. It was a very interesting album, and I actually thought the album flowed. There wasn't a time I was like, "Why the hell is this song here?" Like I didn't have any of that. And overall, it did get sappy towards the end, but you know, he's a a young pop star, and most of his fans are like women. So yeah, I expected it to get sappy. Gotta make them love songs, make that money. But other than that, I really thought it was a good album. So a solid A for me. I think my first A for music, at least. I don't, if I dug around, I'd probably find one, but I actually don't know right now. No, I meant for this year. Not like, in, no, I gave g No, no, no. I gave g no, that's, right. that's true. Never mind. First thing in one, though. First thing in one. Uh, what do you think of this album? You know, I'm not saying we did it back to back, but I'm going to say it anyway. But going through this, I got immediate, immediate flashbacks to the Charlie Puth album. Um, outside of the context, of course, because, you know, this one is more of like a sweet um, high school girls album who, you know, she does to one another. She's like, there's like a breakup song here, like a moving on song. There's some very sweet, sappy love song that Shanique already said. And Charlie Puth's album, you know, it was about him cheating. Look at a couple of little things here and there. Still good music, but like the context was clearly different. But the sound I found kind of similar. And I was like, oh, that's not necessarily a bad thing because I like Charlie Puth's album. I gave his album an A. Um, and I'm going to give this album an A as well. So, yeah, um, he did his pop star thing. Uh, granted, a lot of them like, kind of dipped into R&B here and there, which he did pretty well. Can't argue with that. And there's like this one love ballad that was in there that he did um, that he handled pretty well as well. So I can't really complain with it. All right. So let's – do you have a – I'm assuming you're going to have a top three. Um, you always ask. I'm trying to keep up with you now, man. I'm always got my top threes ready. All right. Uh, and what did you get the album? I said A. I said oh. I gave Charlie Puth's album an A, so I'm giving this one an A as well. All right, my bad. Misheard, misheard. All right, so my number three is you featuring Khalid or Khalid. One of these wow. songs. Actually, b- before you keep going, that's also my number three, but okay, we'll keep going. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a good collab. Their voices match hella well. Um, I love the chords. The chorus is probably the best part, but the verses are really good, too. Um, the song has just an overall fun vibe to it, and it's basically saying you, you know. Um, also, the best part of the song is like once the chorus hits him for the first time, the song just goes up. It never stops. It's like really fun song after that. Um, but the best part, um, you know, the song's about saying we're gonna be young forever and have fun and all this stuff and very. It's definitely made for young people, but I think everyone can enjoy the song. They both did good, and normally I don't like this feature. Like I, I really, I only like one song he ever did, because the voice irritates me. But on this song, he was fine. So yeah, that's my number three. What, well, what do you like about this? Since it's also your number three. <laughs> um, I do. I think it's only like be what three features on this entire album, or maybe two. Either ways, I put Khalid at the top of that. Um, I do like um their how they mesh pretty well together. <laughs> Um, the song starts off a little um, slower pace, not necessarily slower pace, but slower pace than the rest of the song anyway. Then when um when it kicks in, like Shani said, the upbeat is kind of um kind of carries you on in case you know this wasn't for you. It does have a little switch up with um, which was handled pretty well. That that transition was handled pretty smoothly. And um, considering the songs that were like right before it, too clear. The songs right before it also were kind of slower pace. We'll get to those in a bit as well. But um, this one was kind of like. Switched it up a little bit and give some a, a, a nice little change of pace, cause 
I think one of the sappy ones that I was mentioning earlier was also one of the last two songs before this one. So I really appreciated that, you know, this one kind of like brought me back to life a little bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll mention it when we get there. But um, some of his slower songs, they're slow. But if you listen to the lyrics, you're like, mm, we're not having a good day, sir. <laughs> um, but yeah. my number two is Mutual. Okay. Um, And this song is basically like, Sean's, like, trying to make it official. Like, do you feel the same way I feel about you? I need to know. I have to know. So I'm singing my heart out about it. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, he, put it on the song, man. Exactly. He literally did that. Um, I love the chorus. I love the beat. The verses were really good. Lyrics were really good. And the arrangement of the song was excellent. Overall, I had fun with this song. And it was just a, it's like, it's a good transition from youth as well, because it's right after it. So, yeah, I love this song. And what do you think of Mutual? Mutual was an okay song for me. Um, Normally, I don't disagree with you with your top three, but I'm like, this is one of the ones where, like, uh, if I had to cherry pick my favorite side of the album, this one would probably be, like, in the in the latter half of the album. I'm not saying anything's wrong with any particular song, but this one wasn't one of my standouts. However, I did like the fact that I could go through this entire album, hit Mutual, and, you know, not get taken out of whatever zone I was in, because it kind of goes in the flow of whatever, the entire pattern of the album. Everything kind of fit together. The song did not, um, you know, obstruct any sound she might have gotten used to. Because if you made it all the way through the second half of the album, all the way to Mutual, which is towards the very end, then, you know, you kind of figured out Shawn Mendes' pattern here. But by the time you get to it, you're also going to realize he's good at um this little pattern he's made for himself. And this song will be no different. So, yeah, I kind of did the song um, for, for that um in that sense. All right. That's really... Uh, hey, you disagree with my top three. That's fine. It's fine. No feelings are hurt. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Who's better song next time? Psst. What's your number two, then? I'm playing. Number two, um, I don't know anything about Shawn Mendes. So, jumping into the song, and I heard the very first song, I was like, okay, um, I got, I got my eyes open now. So, In My Blood is going to be my number two, which is the very first song um, on the album. Um, I think the only thing I know about Shawn Mendes, actually, I'm going to lie, uh, is his, uh, his his most popular radio hits. Can't even give the name of them. All I know is I hit my bob my head to him once in a while because Shanique hijacks the radio. But... When I do hit them, you know, they're pretty fine. And I, I don't mind the guy. I know he's popular with the girls, too, um, the younger girl crowd, too. So I kind of figured um, the kind of sound he was going to, you know, run into. This wasn't it. This was actually better than what I thought I was going to get myself into. And it made a very strong first impression on me. And this song, one, one thing about it, it has a very good um, chorus all the way through. Versus this weird contrast he does where he has, like, a much calmer... Um, verse delivery than he does for his chorus. Now, for some reason, I, I, there's like a weird, like, high-low kind of feeling I was getting from the song all the way through, and I'm like, okay, that was handled pretty well. Um, it's a good first impression. So, yeah, um, it actually landed all the way up number two, and guys, you also know I'm a sucker for the first song on an album. So, yeah, we got that going for him. Funny enough, um, your number two is my number one. Hey! Um, but, yeah, in, in My Blood is... My number one, because it, like, this song kicks you right into the album. Like, it's like, you're going to hear, and this is not, I, I'm used to, um, I've listened to his last album, Illuminate. I think Ruin, if you listen to Ruin by Shawn Mendes, it's similar to this. He, like, really sings that song, or Mercy is also a good one as well. Lamborghini re- Mercy. Oh, oh, wrong song, my bad. <laughs> yeah, like, not Kanye West. <laughs> what, it's like, please have mercy on me. That song? You're oh, right. uh, oddly enough, that's one of the hits I thought I um I liked about Shawn Mendes, which I couldn't name. But yes, the song I was making fun of like an idiot, that one. Yeah. Um, mercy and... Don't, don't agree with me, rude. <laughs> <laughs> mercy and um Ruin had that, like, strong voice. Because he had this... He has, he does like when he goes like really for a note he does this like yelling thing, but it only works for the him because his voice is like raspy when he tries to and it works, and I, he does that all through the chorus like he comes in very strong on the chorus the beat is really good, it starts off really smooth and then the beat switches up and you're like whoa and um 
it's basically saying he can't give up because it's in his blood. So it has very good lyrics. It's, it's a strong opener, and it caught my attention the most on the album. So you're number one. I'm going to guess. But wait, 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 we didn't get to your number two, though. Yeah, we did. Mutual. Are we sure? I thought that was your number three. No, my number three was youth. We had the same number three. Ah, uh, yeah, that's correct. Okay, that's why I got checked up. Never mind. Okay, my number one. Um, hold on. I think it is Lost in Japan. Oh. Oh wow, yes, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go. The, Lost in Japan was kind of dope. Like it started off with like this cool piano, and it was like, hey, that's not an instrument we hear anymore. <laughs> like it was kind of cool. Like I respect artists who like in um you know, introduce pianos into their songs because I feel like that's some kind of a lost art almost. But yeah, and then, it's weird, the transition into the rest of the sound for the song was carried by a bass guitar. And I was like, this guy is, like, he's in my head. He knows the kind of sounds I'm a sucker for. Because bass guitar carrying out the rest of the song was pretty cool. Like, he's t- pretty much like, you know, getting into this whole story about, you know, being in Japan and, um, well, that's weird. None of the story really said that he was lost in Japan. Cause a lot of the times he said he was like a hundred miles away from Japan. But whatever. <laughs> but yeah, it was a pretty cool story that he was delivering on top of like a really sick bass guitar and um, a really good intro. And to be honest, this was fighting really hard for my number one spot too. I mean, sorry, my number two spot versus um in my blood. So it worked out really well. The, the collaboration between um bass guitar, piano, and the rest of the little pop thing that he threw in there for himself. You know, the, the little Shawn Mendes' things that he threw in. They all worked out very well. Interesting little combo that, you know, Michael found interesting enough to make number one. Hey, third person. I guess you're right. Um, and it's funny, I guess Lost in Japan, I'm like, this is a song Michael would really love. Like, Oh, yeah. I knew it would either be Lost in Japan or In My Blood. So when you say In My Blood, I was like, got it. Um, Lost in Japan w- would be my honorable mention for this album. Because it wasn't my top three, but I loved, um, Youth and Mutual more, so it got lower and lower. Um, it's a smooth beat. Like, and his falsetto on it is, like, really good. And he does that a lot on this album, but this is the first time. I mean, you hear it on Nervous, but on this song, I really enjoyed it because of the beat. I was like, he must really like this girl. He said he's a hundred miles away from Japan. He's willing to hop on a plane and go to Japan just for this woman. And I'm like, all right, I guess. Um, the beat is also old school because if you listen to it, it sounds like something you would hear like early '90s, late '80s type of beat. And I love that. So I really enjoyed just overall the overall production of the song. So let's get into the rest of the album. Nervous. Uh, Nervous was funky. Like, it had um, a really solid beat. He had this breakdown at the end of the song that I thought was really good. It had an old school beat on it, so that's why I also love it. I love when modern songs take older type beats and make it useful. Um, I love the chorus. And like I said, the falsetto in the song was really good. And that's why I was like, man, he could sing high. So I was excited about the new range. It went from In My Blood to, like, this song Nervous, and it was a switch, but I really did like it. What do you think of Nervous? Well, that was a pretty cool, too. It was a cute little sweet song as well, because, like, you know, obviously with the, with the song title, I was like, oh, here we go. It's going to be something sappy about school. Excuse me. Something about him being nervous about a girl. And then, you know, naturally it was. So, but one thing about it, though, I ended up liking it because it did the same thing that I thought about um, in my blood, where even though it was a bit slower paced, it did the same pattern where, like, the chorus was more upbeat, but the, the story and the verses, like, you know, took his time getting along for his delivery. And I was like, all right, I mean, granted, it was, it's, a, it's the same pattern, but done, like, two different ways, but it still worked on me, though. I had no problem with nervous. I had no problem with the pacing or, you know, the slight pop sappiness that he had going on for it. So, yeah, it was pretty dope. All right. uh, Next one. Where were you in the morning? Now, this song is when someone has a one-night stand. And one of the party gets caught up. And the other one's like, bye, bruh. And (laughs) basically, 
the song, he's talking about this girl who he spent the night with who promised to be there in the morning, and she just dipped. He, he was like, where you went? And he's saying all these sweet things. And I like that he um had a cool little R&B vibe to the song. I thought that was really cool. I thought his singing was very smooth. I like the story. When you listen to the lyrics, I'm like, poor Sean. She ain't for you, though. Find someone else, I guess. And hey, she out here playing the field, man. I know. He's like, oh, you said you leave your number. She's like, nah, bro. I just said I'll leave my number. <laughs> right. Don't uh, know you got to read between the lines, man. Yeah. She spent the night. said leave a number. Not only did she just dip, she didn't leave the number. He's like, I don't know. Where you at? I thought it was like, it's a cute song, but when you think about what he's doing, he's like, hmm, you were doing something you weren't supposed to, but it's all right. What do you think of Where Were You in the Morning? I'm going to go back to what you just said a while ago about the R&B feel that you got, that you got from it, because I call something very similar to Like It was like a weird funk pop R&B hybrid kind of song going on. Um, it's a little more exaggerated than it was in Lost in Japan, because I thought Lost in Japan had that kind of feel going forward as well. But I was like, man, this is a weird little combination of things you got going on here. And it's pretty cool because, I mean, granted, this, this, the story was kind of like a, you know, I'm catching feelings kind of thing, even though it's like a one night kind of deal. But, you know, I feel like all three genres meshing here for his story kind of like work together. And it was like a weird, you know, collaboration of things that, you know, you don't really see working too, too well very often. I don't know if people don't want to take chances with the sound in their songs anymore or something else, but I think he kind of mastered it with this one. And this one was pretty cool. I did like the actual story here. It's one of the one that you actually slow um, your listening down to to like figure out what's going on here. Like, man, why 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 he why he get played like that? He <laughs> loved her. You know, it's funny. It's funny that it comes up after Lost in Japan because it's like, what if he traveled all the way to Japan for this girl? Right, <laughs> and it was, she was a one night deal. <laughs> And that like, actually occurred to me as well. I'm like, all right, bro, I guess. I don't know what to tell you. I hope it's not the same girl. If not, you got played so bad. Um, and you're using your miles. But that's another thing. I mean, he's Sean Mendes. He probably got plenty of miles. <laughs> uh, next one. Love. No, I'm sorry. Like to be you <laughs> featuring Julia Michaels. Now, this is the second time I've seen this name. Not second right, time. I thought the same thing. Right. I think she was on Charlie Poof and another white guy's album that we did. I don't remember. Things are meshing. I know she was on um Nile, the guy from One Direction. I think she was on his album. Ah, uh, right. Okay. But um, it was a switch up. Cause I thought this was hella. It was even more slow. It's such a chill song. It's common. It's like a very like. You could just listen to it. But I thought their voices match hella well. I thought just, she sounded great. He sounded great. And I agree. The second feature which on Youth was better than this one. But I thought she did well. Well, it's just, to me, it's just a okay song. It's not a bad song. It's just, it's decent. Like, if it came on the radio, I wouldn't turn it off. Yeah. Right. So, what do you think of Like To Be You? Like To Be You was pretty cool. Um... It was an interesting little duet. It didn't really. It's, it's, it's kind of falls in the same category as Mutual, where like it won't probably won't, won't be like on my radar, but going all the way through the album, it kind of makes sense, you know, because he's kind of just saying, you know, it's one of those if I was in your shoes kind of deals, and you know, it, it's it's, a, it's pretty cool because like um they also did this weird thing too where I forgot to say this in the Khalid, Khalid review, where like they do the duet where like they're sharing the same verse and alternating, and I thought that was cool because normally. Everyone just like gets their their um their own fair share of a verse before alternating to the next person, and this is also the, not another little, little arm lost art form here because they handled it pretty well, and it's not something we see very often. So when they, when I saw that happen, I was like, all right, you know, for as far as uniqueness factor, you got that down packed, no problem. So yeah, that's um like to be you pretty pretty cute little duet. All right, uh, now we're in the cute part of the album and it's called falling all in you now this title my i know yeah it went left but i was like but i was like you know what this is sean mendez i doubt i doubt and i was right Right. it's basically a song about falling in love i don't know why he phrased it the way he did but he did um it's a sweet song um he talks about a person bringing out the best in him and 
The chorus, though, really, really good. It's the most memorable part of the song to me. But overall, I just thought it was sweet. What do you think of Falling All In You? Shanique? Yeah. I'm sorry, my, my phone, my thing, my must be muted. I apologize. I was coughing and I muted my mic and I forgot to unmute it. But yeah, um, I was saying it's a um, nice little song because everything in, as far as the singing was pretty smooth. I do agree with you when you said that, you know, it's the sweet part of the album because everything in here was pretty positive. It was no one night stands, no cheating, no nothing. Everything just kind of like, you know, went all the way through as, a, as, as it should for like a young pop star. You've granted the rest of this album kind of touches on some other things, but we ain't talk about that. But yeah, it was um outside of the song title, the song's actually fine. One of the slower paced ones as well, but actually nothing wrong with that because he handled he handled slow pace pretty well uh, without any issues. Yeah, I agree. Uh, next one, particular taste. To me, what makes this even like remotely memorable for me is again. It's about a woman who has a particular taste. She knows what she wants. She likes things done a certain way. And um, and I, one thing I did like on the chorus, you mo not on the chorus on the verses, you mostly hear his voice. Like yes, there's music in the background, but it's so low, you just mostly hear him. And um, I love how simplistic the beat was, because it really allowed his voice to shine. I thought he had good vocals, and I thought the ending was really good. Like, how he closed out the song was really good. I also got a Prince vibe from it, from how he was singing, like, the chorus and stuff. So oh, like, man, because you want to take it away from me, yep. <laughs> sorry, uh, but yeah, really good. What do you think of Particular Taste? Go right ahead. Mention it again. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what I was pretty much going to say, because the Prince vibe that she was going for, I, what I was translating that into in my head was that he's kind of was hitting a higher octave for the song, or at least like all the way through, anyways. And it sounded pretty cool. Like, um, he he kind of made sure to like balance out his high notes all the way through the song because he was singing it pretty much up there the entire time. Like, if I did that, I'd be sweating, and that's just from sweat singing. Granted, I don't do it very often for good reason. But yeah, he handled it like a pro. Um, if he's going for a Prince vibe, he kind of achieved it. I wouldn't um disagree with that at all. And um, particular taste, like Shanique said, the story is about a woman who pretty much knows what she wants. Um, sure, sure. It's not, I just hope it's not the same one from you know. Where were you in the morning? But whatever. She Moving ain't forward. coming back, so it can't be the same one. Hey, we don't know the timeline of this. Okay, this could have came before. Where were you in the morning? How how are you gonna find her? She don't, he don't got the phone number. I'm not saying he gonna find her. I'm just saying he probably realized she had particular taste before the one night stand happened, and then her taste was like, mm, "That was fun, but I gotta go." <laughs> that might be what that, that might be her thing. All right, listen, I don't write, I don't write the songs, okay? I was thinking, I was hoping she was a woman from falling all into you, but you never know. Uh, uh, yes. Um, I hope she's not the woman in why, because <laughs> or <laughs> that whole. Oh, no. Yeah, why is basically about him, and I guess no, actually I think it's about her. They just can't get their shit together. He's like, why, why can't we get right? Why can't you act right? It's smooth. I like the lyrics. I thought the lyrics were good. Um, the message, the message was fine in the song. I thought he sounded hella amazing, and um, I really enjoyed this song though. So, what do you think of why? Well, that was a pretty simple song for me. Another little arm um, R&B hybrid that was slow paced, and um, it worked well because of him. Um, I think there's like a hip hop song. I forgot who it was by. It might have been fabulous. Was was he? He's the one who did why? No, that was Jada Kiss featuring Anthony Hammond. Jada Kiss, that's right. Yeah, and pretty much that the, the, the song was formatted around asking why in every line, and it was pretty cool. Because he handled it pretty well, all the way through. And the R&B vibe calm definitely helped out with it, too. And um, the little story behind uh, all these questions, you kind of figure out what talking about, like, him and the person he's involved with. So it's, it's pretty sweet for what it was. He handled it in the, you know, the typical pop star way that, you know, he would have, that, you know, they do handle it in. But in a Shawn Mendes way, which at this point in the, in the album, I already realized I liked his version of pop R&B. Or maybe that's just the sound of this album. I don't know. But 
I, I, I'm digging it so far. Yes. Um. Next one, because I had you. Um, it's not my favorite song on the album. Uh, it's not a bad song. It's just not a song that worked for me. I thought it was very decent. It was just another cute song to me, and there was no really memorable moments for me. But I overall, I enjoyed his singing, and I enjoyed the arrangement and everything. But overall, yeah, just not, just not my thing. Not my thing. What do you think of Because I Had You? Because I Had You is like a weird break up and move on song. Because um, he's saying he's going to do all these nice things for the next girl because I had you. Because, I don't know, something went wrong um, in that relationship right there. Can't really pinpoint it. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but something made him just, you know, say, I'm going to do this all, these, all these things right for the next person. I don't know if it was um, his fault. Maybe, maybe I got lost in translation somewhere, but he's like, you know, I'm, 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 round, round two is going to be a little bit better. Maybe I did all the right things, but just for the wrong person, you know, but it was, it was pretty nice. The sound of it was pretty okay. Um, what was one of my standouts either? I don't really, uh, I don't hear the song, but um, considering where it was in the album, like I said, I'm already used to the sound. So uh, it's good that I'm going to find something that I didn't really like as much as my, you know, two that my, I think I, my t- my top two came before the song, right? In my blood and I'm um, lost in Japan. Already set the bar pretty high, which is what I'm afraid of every time I find my top three in the early parts of an album, because that means that everything that comes afterwards I'm going like slightly less, and I'm going to end up having a review like this one where like I gotta justify it being a good song, however, just not one of my favorites or standouts or nothing like that. But yeah, if you go through this album, you know, we have a Twitter. Let us know. Yeah, and um, you know your number three is after Queen, right? Which is like no, I'm saying two. Of my, I'm saying two of my top three were before the song. Oh, I thought you said because you said um something about you're always afraid if you find your top three in the first half. So I was like, what? But I well, okay, well, yeah. and any song in my top three in the first half, what I really meant, right? Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, um, next one is Queen. Queen was a funny song to me because he's singing all these, like, nice lyrics and everything. He's singing it so nice, but he's dragging this girl if you actually listen to the lyric. He's like, who are you to tell me what you do? Who made you a queen? Like, I'm not saying he's, like, saying, yo, you ain't shit without me. But he's kind of saying you ain't shit without me. Right. (laughs) And he's like... You wouldn't be a queen without me, and I made you this, but you think you could boss me around. Like, he's in his feelings, but he's, like, playing, like, on a soft guitar, and he's singing all sweet and stuff. And I guess it's basically about some snobbish woman, and he's like, I made you who you are, blah, blah, blah. It's just weird when you listen to the lyrics, and then how he sings it is just very weird. But overall, I thought it was an interesting song. What do you think of Queen? See, I'm glad you said that because I didn't even catch that from mom from the song. To be honest, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I just um yeah taking care of some stuff. But yeah, um I didn't catch all of that from the song when I listened to it. So I'm glad you actually just said that. So Queen, as far as the sound goes, um it does get a little bit upbeat later on in the song. Um it's still early on in the song, but I guess the intro out of the way, then um the beat kicks in, and as far as that goes, that, you know, pattern that he's already been doing from, um, you know, certain songs in my top three in, in the album overall, he kept that going, and, um, at this point I realized I'm a sucker for it, so when, when he's got that happening in the songs, I'm kind of okay with it. Um, now that I have some context for the actual song, I'm like, hmm, might be worth a, might be worth a revisit here, because I didn't catch that, but okay. But yeah, um, if you listen to this um, podcast before listen to the album, um, keep your eyes off for Queen. Might, 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 be, might be some low-key shade in that song. <laughs> All right. Um. Next one. Perfectly wrong. Which is this is sweet song time. You know, song made for the, the female fans. Um. It's a sweet song. He's basically saying we're both perfectly wrong, and this is why we work, and this is why we should continue to work. It's a very sweet love song. I like the lyrics. I thought he had very good vocals on it. I was like, oh, another sweet song, but. Overall, there's nothing wrong with this song. What do you think of Perfectly Wrong? It's a slow, sweet ballad. There's not really much that we can dig deeper into a song with. Like, it's a slow, sweet ballad. Normally, um, 
you know, you'd find a song like this jammed in there somewhere, obviously, and this one works well, kind of where it is as well, because the song that I thought this part, the album obviously took like a sweet turn earlier because we skipped a couple songs that we re- we already reviewed, like Mutual and Youth, but this is still kind of on the tail end of that part, especially because the songs that I'm um, about to end anyway. So yeah, um, it kind of shows Sean's range. At least you know he can handle like a song where like it's straight up just a slow ass ballad. Um, another song like the one we said, he says sound like Prince, so that he can um, go carry a whole song in like a high octave. It shows other songs show that he can handle like an R and B influence with some pop influence with some funk influence. So you know we we this song just uh, most thing that um, they pointed out to me and I'm eating my words here guys. One of the biggest things pointed out to me was that he can um, at least handle you know some different ranges, which you know makes him all the more impressive to me when I judge him as an artist. Definitely agree. And now the final song on this album is "When You're Ready." <laughs> Um, it's not the ideal closer for me, but, 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 it made sense for this album. The way he was going, it made sense that he closed it with, like, a love song. It's not ideal, but I understood why he did it. Um, basically this song is, he must have really liked this girl. Because he's like, even if it takes ten years for you to be ready, I'm waiting for you. And I'm like... You better than me, bro. Um, hey, girls like patience, man. Yeah, but ten years. Hey, you never. Hey, you, you. I think you actually know somebody who's been um going on that long without being like you know tying the knot, as we say. Or maybe it's coming on ten years. I don't know. That person you said you know in college. They've been oh. together since like freshman year or sophomore year. It's like the couple. Yeah, but, Whatever. They're, but they're engaged now. Oh, okay. Well, eh, okay. Kind of counts. It's, not, it's, it's also not 10 years. I get that, but I was just but saying like, kind of reminded me not, of it. Like, he's not even with this person. It's different if you're, like, dating someone. 10 years is still a long time, depending on when you date. Like, if I'm 30, I'm not waiting 10 years for you. But, like, he's not even with this person. He's like, I'm going to wait 10 years for you to be ready. Listen, man, when you know, you know. When you know, you know. This is not pushing teas <laughs> <laughs> <not pushing T's> out. <laughs> Check that out, by the way. Daytona was awesome. Um, but which, by the way, we forgot some. Some we'll get to that later, but it's fine. <laughs> no, what is? I'm I'm gonna forget. What is it? No, we forgot about infrared and the actual view of the song at the time. Like we clearly did not realize this like underlying um heat going on regarding that song. Oh yeah, we and totally missed that. We didn't, we didn't find out until like maybe days later or like the day after or something like that. So we were a little confused, <laughs> but we just we just we just looked at it as a song by itself. We had no idea of the context in it. So if you listen to that um that podcast, understood that we went in there bl- oh excuse me, we went in there blind. Yes, 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 we did. But um, and it's funny because I like I said. If you're dating, if you're not dating a person, I'll be waiting a decade for this person. Unless you're, I, well, he's young, but he's about our age or something like that. He's around our age. I ain't doing that shit either. But I thought it was a sweet song. I thought it was hella romantic. He had really good vocals. Like I said, I wouldn't end it on this song, but I understood why he did it. So what do you think of When You're Ready? When you're ready, um, my biggest complaint is that it's not my ideal closer. It had a great opener, which kind of sucked to f- um sucked to find out that the last the latter half of the um album got closed out with something that was to me on the lackluster side, mostly because it was an ender. Because I was expecting something along the lines of my top three to close it out. Because he was great in the early half. I think all his um, in my opinion, the strongest hits were in the early half. I'll even consider nervous, which was kind of one of the slower pace ones to be one of the stronger hits. I was like, yo, put something at the end to, like, you know, give it, like, a strong ending. Like, you know, if you go to a concert, you play... I'm not saying, you know, format your album like a concert, but, like, in my head, when I go through an album, I want to have, like, one lasting good impression. When I come out on something that's not as memorable as, you know, my favorites on the album that came prior to it, it's kind of a bummer. But you know what? This is what it is. Um, it's not a bad song on its own. My biggest complaint is just the positioning. And to be fair, that's not really 
something to judge an album on. It's just a personal mic thing. This is not an objective fact. This is just a subjective opinion, guys. Don't forget that. But yeah, that's kind of how I feel about that one. You know, it's funny that she mentioned a concert because what if your biggest song is a slow song? You're still in your concert on that slow I song. I mean, yeah. I, well, I wasn't just calling, what's the name, saying it on its pace, though. I was, only, I was saying it on the actual quality of the song. I'm not just talking about the fact that the song was slow. Oh. I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm not saying he needs in my blood. I'm saying he could end it on nervous for like here. That's one of my favorite slower songs on the album, and that'd have been a better um, closer for me, in my opinion. But I just think um, as far as if I wave my between when you're ready and nervous and some of the other slow ones, when you're ready sort of gets the tail end of that um of, the, of that judgment right there. But you know I, I, I'm the, the guy is doing a lot more than I am. I'm not a musician. He he probably has it under control. So it's what it is. He still got an A from me. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with the A. Um, closing remarks, definitely check out this album. Um, it's To me, it's worth buying. I don't think there's one bad song on this album. I think there's something for everyone. Um, the whole album works together. So I say, support your artists. Buy, if not the album, buy some of the songs. Uh, what's your closing remark? Um... It's a good album, guys. It's, a, it's worth, it, worth even A. So I can't go tell you not to go listen to it. It's good to go check it out. I'm not a Shawn Mendes guy, but I found some things that I liked. Um, I hope that she means something to you guys, because I don't know how big Shawn Mendes is. When I say I don't know much about him other than what I hear on the radio for his top hits, I mean I don't know nothing. So going through this, it's kind of like you know, a little bit of eye opener for a good first impression. And I'm like, you know, okay, sure. It's a, it's a, it's a, pretty, it's a pretty dope album. And I, have, and I my, my definitely have my favorites here. Lost in Japan, I'm definitely going to come, come back to find out at some point. But yeah, if you've never been um, introduced to Shawn Mendes before, I'd say this is a good first um first album to go through if you want to see what his most recent music is looking like, you know, where his sound is heading, see what kind of range he has. I think this one covers a lot of bases, so definitely check it out. Also, I do want to mention, I've listened to his last two for the most part, and they were just as good, so... Definitely, for Michael even, you know, check out his other ones too. Because, to me, he hasn't had a bad album yet. I think this is his third one. And, um, definitely, this album is definitely worth listening to. I think it's one of the better pop ones that I've heard so far. Um, I guess we can close it out, unless you have anything else to say. No, nope, no, nope, cover all the bases here. <laughs> Alright, uh, next episode, though, we're gonna do the new... Kanye West and Kid Cudi album, Kid Sees Ghost. And if you're, like, looking for it, you have to type in the album name because, I don't know, the way Spotify is set up, like, you can't find it under Kid Cudi or Kanye West's name. It's weird. But, <laughs> for future reference. Um, but that, that'll be our next episode of Seven Songs. I hope it's good. You know, I'm not the biggest Kid Cudi fan. I don't know about Michael, but I'm not the biggest Kid Cudi fan. But I'm a big Kanye West fan, so I'm actually excited about it. And um, hit us up on Twitter at Echo U Podcast. And you can also find us on many uh, social media sites, including Facebook, iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube under Echo Underground Podcast. And if you want to listen to us on your phone or anything like that, you can find us on many apps also under Echo Underground Podcast. And we will see you guys on the next episode. Bye. See ya.